So, I think I can cook. And it's good for a home cook. One thing I've always been really bad at is baking. I just can't bake. I take liberties with the recipes because baking is a science and cooking is more of an art. Cooking you can kind of fiddle with. Baking you can't. You have to stick to the procedures, you have to stick to the method. So I'm going to try bake on the biggest baking stage there is. The Bake Off Technicals. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Okay, so if you haven't watched the Bake Off, uh, why? Go watch the Bake Off. Halfway through, they do a technical challenge. Technically, they don't know. They don't know what they're cooking. It's just random. So welcome to, to the, the Great, Great British, British Bake, Bake Off. The second challenge in the Bake Off is a controlled technical bake. So Bake Off Bakers, challenge two is now to come. It's the Victoria Sandwich Challenge. Episode one is just a Victoria sponge. If I can't make a Victoria sponge, there's no hope for any other episode. I'm pretty sure week five is a souffle. In this technical challenge, each home baker has been given exactly the same list of ingredients, but no instructions on how to combine them. Okay, so I looked online for all the technical recipes, they're not on there. They have to use their baking prowess, and as I previously stated, I don't have baking prowess. So I'm going to Google the recipes, I'm going to get as close as I can. I'll get Mary Berries, I'll get Port Hollywoods, Prulites in the future. Another little downfall, they have a lot of equipment on here. I'm not spending money on the equipment. I'm doing it all by hand. I don't have a stand mixer. The technical challenge for me is probably the most important because for me it's not just about passion and flair, it's about their ability and what they're capable of doing and that in this environment is going to be a corker. If I can't make a Victoria sponge there's something seriously wrong with me and I shouldn't really be British. I have Mary Berry's recipe up here. So apparently this is all I need. I have strawberries. That's because in Mary Berry's recipe, it's not stable. It calls to make a jam. I've never made a jam. No one has said I should be able to do this one. <laughs> First I preheat the oven to 180 or 160C or gas four. I live in Canada. What is that in Fahrenheit? 356 according to a quick Google. It also says line the bottom of the tins with a circle of baking paper. I haven't got baking paper. Break the egg into a large mixing bowl, add the sugar, flour, baking powder and soft butter. Mix everything until well combined. Be careful not to over mix. My scales are so small, I can't even see the numbers. Four eggs. Two hundred and twenty five grams of sugar. Two hundred and twenty five grams of flour. That all came out at once, and I got it to two, two, one. Two hundred and twenty five grams of softened butter. It's rock hard. I guess I'll microwave that to soften it. Mix everything together until well combined and we want the soft dropping consistency. really paranoid about mixing it too well. Well, it's not dropping, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm so unfit. 
We're gonna go with it. I don't want to overmix it, as they say. They say that. <laughs> Mary Berry does. <laughs> Divide the mixture evenly between the tins and bake 25 minutes. Don't be tempted to open the door. I think it might dip. I think from my Bake Off watching, it will like sink. I've seen them weigh it on the Bake Off. While the cakes are cooking, make the jam. Okay, so I'm gonna mash the strawberries like it says, and then add the sugar, 250 grams of it together. Hey, they're starting to smell like cakes. Bring to a boil over low heat until the sugar is melted. Increase the heat for four minutes. Why four minutes? It's so specific. Oh, with the faithful 20 minute mark. There's that whole test where you put a knife in, if it comes out dry, it's done, right? We'll try that. It's gonna be stuck to the tin, I know it is. I just know it is. It's gonna come out and have to mess and patch it together. Oh, I don't have a cooling rack. I've just moved into this apartment and I haven't set my kitchen up exactly how I want it yet. I don't know, it's on my list of things to get. Okay, you know what? This one, I'm pretty sure it's done. They do that thing where you listen to it and if it's bubbling, my jam's going, then it's not done. I did the knife thing, it's done. I just need to turn this out. I'm going to see it's my jam. I'm giving the other one two minutes because I can still hear it and it came out wet. I don't know why they'd be differently, but I'm going to give it two more minutes. Sort my jam. Okay, now that stopped bubbling. Maybe that works. Okay, four minutes to rub and it says to go into a shallow container, so... It seems quite runny. Obviously it's got to cool, but... What that was? Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> Is it gonna come out of the tin? No! Maybe she just needs a bit of encouragement. Okay, we've come out in two pieces. I can work with that. This guy, I'm gonna be a bit more. Hey, she kind of came out, you know, 
I'm not that sad. They're not even. Now we wait. Everything's got to cool. And I'm not confident that this jam's going to set. Oh! Actually, it's too alright. Tastes like jam. Okay, the buttercream. Beat the butter in a large bowl until soft. And then add the ice and sugar. Gonna add half the ice and sugar, work it in, add the other half. Work in with a tablespoon of milk. Spoon the buttercream into a piping bag. I don't have a piping bag. And I've seen a trick of people putting it in a Ziploc bag and cutting the end off, so I'm gonna try that. Why do you not get ice and sugar everywhere? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, let's try and assemble this thing. And uh, we'll see how it comes out. <laughs> Do a little bit of masonry work, I think. It's just a little patch job. Just a little smidgen of There you go, <laughs> it's like no one ever knew. So the jam actually set better than I thought. It actually, it's a bit runny. It's not bad, I think. Right, so from what I've seen, they fill a uh, Ziploc bag and then you just snip the end and pipe as if it's a piping bag. I've never really used piping bags. I'm not going to put it all in in case it doesn't work. Okay. Here goes nothing. Oh, that's all right then. She's a bit thick and uneven, isn't she? You know what? I'm quite happy with that. There it is in slice. You know, I think... It tastes like a Victoria sponge. It's not the most moist cake I've ever <laughs> tasted. I think that extra smooth of milk in the buttercream has made it too loose. It seems to be thick, seeping out the edges. I wonder what P. Hollywood makes of the texture. Then he does this, doesn't he? Scrapes it down a little bit. It's like, ooh, close textured. I'm actually happy with the jam. 
the jams actually turned out best. It's, um, Wait! I shouldn't really have a piece of Victoria sponge without a tea. My intro is coffee, I know, but tea. Well, that's it, my first can't be. It's only going to get harder from here. This is a basic sponge. Anyways, I think we too might be bread. And I'm alright at bread. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, <laughs> tell me how I can make the cake better. It's really not that bad. Really?